Why are we back on set today? Tell us, Cheryl. Because we're making Asian charcuterie. What the heck is Asian charcuterie? Hey everybody, it's Midnight Weekend. Hi. How's it going? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We sat there listening to 10 hours of cozy fireplace music and uh, you We know. melted off all the LA snow. It's our first day back on the set in 2021. Holy crap, you know. Feels good. This year's gonna be so much better. I could just feel it. Nah. Well, I was browsing around the internet and I saw somebody post up an Asian inspired charcuterie. You know, it looked good. Um, it had all the Asian hits. There was like dumplings and Pocky and uh -huh. sushi. Yeah, and then she showed showed it to me and I totally like tore it a new one. It's just mashing up a bunch of like Cold snacks, dishes. Asian tapas, putting all these things that you would find maybe at a dim sum restaurant yeah. or a snack store onto a piece of wood and then call it a charcuterie. I didn't accept that as the definition of Asian charcuterie. And what is that meaning you might ask? Well, I might ask Google. Charcuterie is a French term for a branch of cooking devoted to prepared meat products. Present and serve, preserve meats. You know, I want to support the concept of Asian charcuterie, but let's dig deeper. There are a lot of Asian countries for generations and centuries that have been preserving meat mm. in very unique ways. It's a great time to celebrate that on this platter. The first thing that I thought of was lap chung. It's a Chinese sausage that's usually cooked with rice. Mm. And then what did you think of? I thought of xiang chang. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like the Taiwanese version of your sausage. Yeah. All right, first up, we got proteins. Where to start? Well, we were talking about lap chung. Oh, I said it right. Yeah, you mm hmm Xiang chang is just the more fragrant version of yours. The thing about Asian sausages in this sense is that they're kind of sweet while they're salty as well. And here, in my two fists. What do you have here? <laughs> I've never bought this on its own, yeah. but these are basically banh mi meats. They're cold cut terrines, yeah. but more affectionately known as head cheese. You can obviously see there's like all sorts of meats in there, big chunks of cracked pepper. This one's called cured pork roll sausage because that's exactly what it is. Oh boy, do I have a great surprise for everybody today. <laughs> the very famous or infamous pidan, or otherwise known as century duck eggs. All right, and then finally we have on my end some fish roe. So this is mullet roe, it's fish eggs from Taiwan, and it's a specialty dish. It was marinated in sake and honey. This fish I had a lot in my childhood as well, uh, along with uh, xiang chang, like the Taiwanese sausage. Both of them would actually be eaten with raw garlic. I'm gonna cut this bad boy open. Actually, it's pretty dry. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. There's bits of cartilage in there for sure. All right, try that piece. Tell me how that is. So all these things are already, cool. <laughs> already cooked. Tastes great. The next one. <laughs> we've got here is the uh, cured pork roll sausage. Wow. There we go. Wow, that looks so strange coming out of the bag. And this is it. I don't think there's any more uh, container. Oh boy. Oh, it looks like a radish. Mm. Like a spicy ham. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention guys, that we have one more meat product here mm. and that is pig's ear, marinated with five spice and then sliced into bits. I used to eat it a lot when I was a kid. We got a bowl of it, show you. I'm gonna try one. Hmm. Okay, I'm cracking open the century duck egg. It's like it a is geode. like a gem. Do it. Like jelly. Yeah, I love that gelatinous transparency that the egg white turns into. Should we try one? Mm-hmm. The yolk has funk, but it really is a great flavor. It's almost like a urchin. I'm gonna take the uh, Taiwanese sausage, cut some slits in there, insert some raw garlic slivers. Oh, go right there. Whoa, better have some gum afterwards. For our presentation, we soaked some bamboo leaves. It's already looking like a feast. It kind of is. Next up, we have side dishes. Side dishes are an integral part of Asian cuisines like banchan, Japanese pickles, or Chinese cold dishes, and they're all pretty awesome. So we got a few. We're gonna make a banh mi slaw. Ooh, what's that? Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Here we picked up from the Vietnamese market a sweet and sour chopped lemongrass. Lemon this is really 
really interesting. I do like the taste of lemongrass and you can't really chew into it on its own. But then I see a lot of lemongrass in there. I'm gonna grab three little bunches. Interesting. Whoa. Because I wonder if it's trying to prevent you from eating the lemongrass. I wish that came with instructions. <laughs> <laughs> to our Vietnamese friends out there, what do you do with this stuff? Let's just use the juice of it. I guess we're making a slot anyway, so yeah. it's okay. Let me just slot up a little more. Should I try it? I should try it. Mmm. You make it sound so delicious. <laughs> We have some roasted shishito peppers here. Those are a favorite within Japanese cuisine and they've made it to every hip restaurant in the world. We have some preserved plums and prunes and tamarind. They're a very popular snack to eat when you're drinking beer. Let's say you put two of each of them. Noah's Ark over here. Okay, I have to try this. It's like a dirty snowball. It's powdered sugar. These are pickled radish wraps that you typically have at Korean barbecues. Cheese is an important part of a charcuterie, so we're gonna still have some cheese on this board. We have here a marine French cheese. It almost looks like a Chinese bao or something. And then here, cambozola cheese. Like gorgonzola and camembert? Yeah, kind of like that. Oh, that's very cute, that. Oh, that is very cute, that. Holy cow, I'm just looking at this I right now and I'm like, <laughs> We made this? Here we have uh, some banchan. Lotus roots. I love with, uh... lotus roots. Okay, I have some tofu noodle strips that are tossed in sesame oil. I think this is too small, Paul. I think it's just right. Isn't that cute? It is kind of cute. All right, fine. We're gonna move on to the carbs. The carbs! So typically, what do we have? Like baguettes? Breadsticks. Crackers. Mm. Not today. On this plate, cut up spring onion pancakes. Tongyobing. And over here. Saobing. But this typically goes with Taiwanese breakfast. Yeah, the best part about saobings is that they're stuffed. You put like eggs and onions and meats yeah. in there. Anything you want, to be honest. It's just basically a sandwich vehicle. And then over here, we have rice cakes, cheesy rice cakes. Exclusive midnight weekend invention. We took Korean multigrain rice, mixed it in with some Parmesan, right? Yeah. And then we put some Parmesan on the pan. Finally, we have a bunch of bows in front of us. My eyes eyes are just eating this up right now. Mm. Down to the last leg. I almost might remove one of these guys and uh, replace it with some dried persimmons. And then over here, we got these cute little mini kayakis. You know what? I usually don't like a whole big taiyaki because it's actually quite a lot of it's filling, lot. Yeah. but I do love getting them right when they're fresh. Mm. Lychees. Oh my God. Wow, we have a complete meal for five. <laughs> five households. So there you have it, guys. This is the official Asian charcuterie by Midnight Weekend. It looks beautiful, I must say. Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl's just... dumbfounded right now. She has nothing to say. Back to you, Paul. So good. I'm just staring at it. Look at all of this. It like, is color. a little mesmerizing, isn't it? We did taste a few things along the way, but the real magic is pairing a lot of these flavors together. One of the things I'm looking forward to eating is kind of already paired for me. I've never had this like garlicky sausage before, mm. so I kind of just want to eat that. I want to try this rice cake with grilled Parmesan and put a little terrine on it and then sandwich it up with some like pig ears and shishitos and just eat the whole damn thing. And then just, argh. what was the most surprising ingredient on this Asian charcuterie board? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. See ya.